It is time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. We are playing Primordial Soup, uh, or we are about to start Primordial Soup with our biology students. These are the characters who are going to college to learn biology so that they can become ecologists for free in the future. So, let's explain this game really quick. This, is, this game comes from kind of the, the, the late 90s, which is the, the period, I think, in which um, the European style games, the, the games that were coming out of Europe, hadn't solidified themselves into these sort of um, purely competitive exercises when they, they allowed more randomness and were kind of more free flowing and, and sometimes had more of a, uh, a hook. Uh, they're, they're more tied to their subject matter than maybe the stuff that was uh, produced in the 2000s. Now, I, I don't have a huge um, basis of information to uh, make these assumptions on, but that's just the, the games I've played, that's what it seems like to me. And it makes sense to me intuitively that there would be this kind of formation period where they're, you know, coming out of the, the more chance-based, uh, more simulative games, and then... Um, Kind of moving to this, so this is a game like that. It's got a it's got a strong link to its subject matter. I wouldn't say it's a simulation, um, but it's interesting nonetheless, and really f uh, got a lot of fun and interesting things going on with it. Um, not my favorite game. I've played it solitaire once, like several years ago. I lived in another house then, so it's been a while. It's not it doesn't really grab me, but I like that it exists, and I'm glad I have a chance to play it here with all of you and all of these real people in the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. So real quick, what do you do in the game? Everyone has these amoebas. Okay, that's the primordial soup, and that's why we're doing it for biology class here today, students. And their amoebas have colors, and they're the color of the player. You know, so each person has their color. Amoebas have these little things sticking out. These things are to hold damage counters, a very innovative way to hold damage counters. So as you see, each player starts with an amoeba that's injured, and an amoeba that isn't, and they, there's a, a method by which they um, have to put those out. All right, so what an amoeba does is it eats, and if it doesn't eat, it gets hurt. Now, what does it eat? It eats a cube of each of the colors that are not the amoeba. amoeba. So if this blue, this is one of flushes here, flushes number one amoeba, eats, it would eat these three, and then it's gonna poop out two more blue cubes. Okay, so that's pretty much what they do, and you score, I don't remember, okay, you score based on the number of amoebas you have on, and I don't know, I'll have to look at scoring, but it's based on the amoebas you have and then the gene cards you buy. So you can buy genes which um, give your amoebas special powers and they change the rules, because uh, otherwise, without those, pretty much all amoeba's going to do is drift around based on this card here. So as you see right now, they're all going to stay still. But in the future, they might be drifting around. Um, they can also decide to move and uh, move randomly. So one of the I think one of the genes makes it so they don't move randomly, or they can roll twice, or something like that. There's, they do all sorts of things. You'll see as the game goes on. And you're basically trying to score points by getting your amoebas out there. Um, having a large population of amoebas, and having a lot of genes. Now, you don't want to have too many genes because these environmental cards are going to have these thresholds, and if the score of your genes or the numbers on your genes, so like this speed is 3, if you had speed 3 and you know uh, uh, 12 more worth of other things, you would break this threshold and you would have to get rid of stuff so that you were lower than that threshold. You have to pay a cost. You can also pay the money, which is... Um, I don't know, genetics something, I forget what it's called. Um, there's, a, there's some actually similar elements uh, between this game and probably the most science-y biology game I've played, uh, American Megafauna. Uh, one of those is that you are going to use these, you, you pay for things with like, genetic material. Uh, something like that. So let's get into the game. That's a quick enough overview. Here's the score track. Oh, it's got a leapfrogging score track. So if you score one, you don't you don't ever share a space. And you're always so say this player here, this is Smudge, score two. He would just, he actually gets a, a three points off of it. So it's it's got a kind of a built-in catch the leader mechanism there. All right, so we went through the first phase of the first round of the game, and pretty much everyone just stayed where they were. 
and eight. It was a it's kind of an odd first card because it keeps them in the same position. It's the five is stationary. If you were to roll for movement, you roll the five, you would remain stationary. But there was really no reason for anyone to move. They um, maybe if you're like really into this game and there's some strategy, there might be a strategy for some reason to move. But I basically um, am at the level where. You're just trying to try to eat, and everyone had enough food where they were to start eating um, and be okay. No one's, uh, I'm not thinking too much about positioning, um, and neither are the players because they are not. Um, so now we're going to draw a new environment card, and this one's probably going to involve drift, and it does. So we can tell it has drift because it's got the north um, letter there outlined in red. So. Next turn, they're going to be moving north. And then we're going to go to new genes. Players are going to get be able to buy new genes, and they're going to get some new uh, BP, which I guess is biological points. I thought it was genetic material, but I don't know. I think biological points is maybe some sort of something. Um, I see these as being very similar to the pennies in American megafauna, only we don't have to deal with auctions, I don't think, which is nice. Never mind, I read something wrong. Uh, they don't get any new money right now, so they're only going to have four to buy things. And there's quite a lot to choose from. All these cards are different things. Um, there's a little booklet in here somewhere that talks about what people can buy. Yeah. Which is also kind of a fun thing that you wouldn't see probably if this game were made ten years after it was made. All of these different sort of um, abilities that you can get that require um, little um, descriptions. Okay, our competitors have made their purchases of um, mutations that they got. Uh, Snugbug here, he got defense. Um, that lets him fight back if someone attacks him. Otherwise, they can't fight back. And people attack with a different um, mutation, which isn't out right now, called Struggle for Survival. Um, Dan, well, he got spores. He was actually the first one to choose. That lets him, when he puts down a new amoeba, you can put it anywhere. Um, and the idea of spores appealed to him. Uh, Flesh, he got intelligence. Intelligence doesn't do anything except it's cheap and it's worth points. So that's what he got. I think probably you want to get intelligence later in the game, but he got it early on. Not a lot he can do about it, but he has some more money, so next time he can maybe get something a little better. We'll see. Smudge, he didn't get anything at all. He's just keeping his money, and now people are going to start their uh, amoeba divisions and putting out more amoebas. All right, we saw everyone buy... Um, some more amoebas to put down. Um, Smudge, he was alone in purchasing two. That's going to, because of his position, I think that's going to put him ahead on the scoring track. And the reason why it was advantageous for people to buy any at all is because that's going to let them score. If you look at this chart, they need to have three out there. And if they have three, they get a point. So we'll go ahead and do the scoring now. That's going to be Danimal. He got a point because he has three. One, two, three. And then Smudge, he gets to move two. So he's going to jump ahead by doing that because he has four out. One, two, three, four. Um, I, the downside for that move is he doesn't have a lot of money to buy any any uh, sort of mutations next time. Um, and he's the only person without any. All right, let's move on. Everyone else is just going to move one. And then we would normally do deaths if... Um, oh, no, deaths happens before scoring. If they have two or more. And then... Do, 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 do. That's it. And then we're going to start a new round. And people are going to drift north. Flush move first because we're going in ascending order. The game, different phases are done in different turn orders, okay? Uh, for each round. Or is it turn? I guess it's called round. So the movement and feeding is in ascending order. So if you're in last place, you get to do this first. And there's some advantages to that, as we will see right now. So Flush went first. He moved here, eight, no big deal. He moved here, eight. Mm, bigger deal because this piece here, which belongs to Smudge, is going to drift up to the same spot where it doesn't have the food it needs. If you see, there's no um, gr uh, no yellow there because Flush just ate it up. So when it gets to be Smudge's turn, he might try to move a different direction so that that piece doesn't get damaged um, at the cost of yet another one of these, which is not so good. So he might not want to do that. I don't know. We'll, we'll get to that. And then a, a similar situation happened here. This green piece here, which is one of the animals, um, it can't drift north, so it's going to stay still. It's going to have to move if it wants to eat this turn because flesh came in and ate the food. 
and pooped out blue. Tanimal decided to just take the damage for starvation rather than risking the point to move. He has more options if he has more money, and he, he's still going to get to keep this piece here this turn. On. Next turn, he's going to have to be thinking a little bit more about it. Smudge was going to move his. He was going to spend his money to move his, but he realized it was a 50-50 proposition. He'd have to do the die roll to move, and if he got a 2, it wouldn't be good because he would, you know, that would just take him where he's going anyway. So he actually should be up here. Um, if he got a, we'll go back to where he was. Though. If he got a one, it wouldn't be good. If he got a five, it wouldn't be good because he'd be where he's staying. So he would need to roll a three, four, or six. And was that here? And that was just not worth the money for him. So he took the damage. All righty, we're at the end of the round. And we only had two uh, mutation buys. Um, the animals people are long live now. So he or amoebas, he spores out these long-lived um, amoebas all over the board that are just going to persist an extra round basically without food. If they get, th they can they can live till three instead of two. Normally they die when they're at two, but his are so great. Um, and Flesh is now, now has intelligent parasites. So if he's in the same spot as someone, he can eat one less food cube in order to eat a, a little bit of their money, basically, is what he does. Um, Score-wise, we see Smudge is taking a, a more commanding lead. Um, the animals, it's, it's starting to spread out more. Uh, with Flush, he didn't, he didn't uh, get anything last time, any new amoebas, so he's down at three, whereas Danimal and uh, Snugbug both have four amoebas, and Smudge has Five, so he's taken four points. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna be getting into territory where people are gonna score on gene cards as well, though. So that's gonna change things and probably work in Flush's favor since he does have the money for another gene card.